The fact of the matter is, not only have we allowed the systematic slaughter of the unborn, but we have publicly funded it, while at the same time having the audacity to claim that we are valiant defenders of human rights and women's rights. Human beings are so precious that they ought never to be enslaved by another. But if one inconveniences you in response to your own actions, then you should be able to violently rip them into pieces. Well, makes sense, obviously. Emanations and penumbras, after all. Welcome to the Godly Troublemaker Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Parker. The Godly Troublemaker exists to shine the light of Christ in the eyes of the idols of our day. Let's go get into some trouble. Introduction. There is no greater skid mark on our country in the history of our great nation than that of abortion. Now, as soon as I say that, one may protest with a very smug yet angry voice, slavery. Now, I'm sorry, but slavery was nothing compared to abortion. Yes, slavery was sin and rightly condemned in the Bible as man-stealing. Quote, If a man is found stealing one of his brothers of the people of Israel, and if he treats him as a slave or sells him, then that man shall die. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. Deuteronomy 24.7 And since we're skipping the foreplay this time around, perhaps now would be a good time for me to ask you, by what standard do you condemn slavery? As a Christian, I have absolutely no problem appealing to a universal moral standard outside of myself to which we will all give an account. His name is Jesus, and he is the ruler of nations. But by what standard do you condemn slavery, or anything else for that matter? Why is slavery wrong? You may protest, because it just is okay. Uh, Yes, but why? When you say that slavery is bad and that racism is bad, you are saying that it ought not to happen. You have just made a universal moral claim. Nay, you just declared a universal moral law, which means that it's true for everyone, everywhere, for all time. That is, if slavery is ever practiced or racism is ever perpetuated, then it is wrong. But again, who says? You've had this repeated to you over and over again, that you just reason from it, not to it, and given that you've never had to account for it, you've just gone on your merry little way. So allow me to stop you in your tracks and piss all over your path. You say that slavery is wrong and that racism is wrong, but you can do so only because Christ is king and you exist in a world governed and sustained by him. You say it doesn't matter. I don't believe any of that stuff. Well, it doesn't much matter what you believe. I'm sorry, Snowflake. Your view of the world doesn't change the reality of the world that you live in. But back to slavery and racism being wrong. Again, I'm tempted to ask, who says? But I'll spare you that for the moment and simply ask, why? What is the justification for it being wrong? What is the moral principle behind it being wrong? Now, one may be tempted to say something along the lines of, well, equality and stuff. But what do you mean by equality? You can't simply say all human beings are, well, equal and stuff. In fact, observation tells us the exact opposite of that. Some are strong, some are weak, some are fat, some are skinny, some are cunning, and some are dense, some are pretty, and some are ugly, some are rich, and some are poor, some are smart, and some are Democrats. The world is filled with observable inequalities. They're all over the place. And if you ask a tyrant about equality, he will certainly agree that all animals are created equal, but that some are more equal than others. So why shouldn't some be oppressed? Why shouldn't some be discriminated against? And why shouldn't some be enslaved? Well, because it's not right, you say. Again, who says? Well, you protest. I wouldn't like it. Well, so what? You say, well, it's just not good for society. Well, first of all, that really doesn't say anything at all, but let's entertain that for a minute, shall we? Who gets to define good and who gets to define society? There were those in the American South who thought slavery was positively good and that the net gain outweighed the net loss. Not to mention, there are those who think sex slavery is positively good today. 
like all those sick perverts who frequent in Sex Island, and Epstein didn't kill himself. The fact of the matter is, no one has any right saying slavery or racism is bad unless there is something inherent in the makeup of man as man, something that is not quantifiable, but is inherent to his very nature. Now, only Christianity answers this question. Man was made in the image of God and has inherent dignity, value, and worth from womb to tomb. This is why a child in the womb is referred to as just that, a child. And it's also why the Greek word for unborn child, brephos, is also the same word that is used for a newborn child. God doesn't distinguish between the two. Both are children and both bear his image. So then, if one cries foul with regards to slavery or racism, they can only do so on the grounds of a universal moral norm that stands outside of all men as men. Human beings made in the image of God is an absolute truth that runs all the way through and all the way down, which means it's not something that can be selectively applied without the wheels eventually falling off. Nor can it be selectively applied without looking like a stark, raving, manipulative, demonic jackass, or if you will, like a banshee straight out of the devil's anus, or like Lizzo after a two-day fast, or like Nancy Pelosi going dry for two days in a row. But you get my point. The fact of the matter is, not only have we allowed the systematic slaughter of the unborn, but we have publicly funded it, while at the same time having the audacity to claim that we are valiant defenders of human rights and women's rights. Human beings are so precious that they ought never to be enslaved by another. But if one inconveniences you in response to your own actions, then you should be able to violently rip them into pieces. Well, makes sense, obviously. Emanations and penumbras, after all. Now, one may protest at this point by saying, you're comparing apples to oranges. Slavery is enslaving another human being while abortion is regarding a single human being. But that is exactly, by definition, what it is not doing. Every single human being with half a brain knows this. To abort literally means to terminate, to kill, and to end. When a woman goes in to have an abortion, she walks out, but her child doesn't because he or she, the baby, was terminated, killed, ended. But the woman was not. The debate has never, ever, ever been over what a woman can do with her own body. The fact of the matter is, nobody cares. The issue is whether or not she can legally exterminate her own child before it's born. We need to stop all of this patronizing nonsense that abortion is a complex moral issue, as if to sound very thoughtful and intelligent and such. Abortion is not a complex moral issue. It is the most straightforward, clear-cut moral issue. Either it is okay to murder your baby or it is not. Period. So for every feminazi, commie, and crazy dyke with a vagina hat on carrying a fluorescent hand-colored sign that says, my body, my choice, we would simply encourage you to be consistent, like applying that same principle to others. How about we start with your baby? And while we're being consistent, I have a t-shirt that you can wear along with your Shout Your Abortion t-shirt. It says, Shout Your Racism, or my body is better because my body is white. Or, shout your slavery. Or, proud owner of a few colored folk. If that's offensive to you, I would argue I'm simply applying your principles consistently. If you believe that babies can be ripped into pieces at the discretion of their mother, then you don't really care about slavery or racism either. But are nothing more than a virtue-signaling jackass. And if that's offensive to you, it's absolutely nothing compared to the righteous indignation that God feels about abortion. The Overturning of Roe The entire country is abuzz, or perhaps aflame, regarding Samuel Leto's leaked draft, stating that Roe should be overturned. Perhaps at this point in time, it is much ado about nothing. After all, nothing has actually happened yet, and it was simply the opinion of one Supreme Court justice. 
And though the idea of Roe being overturned is certainly a step in the right direction, we have to remember that Joe Biden is also the most popular president that has ever been elected in the history of the U.S. We also have to remember the resolve of most in our country. Roe has never been law. And yet we have gone along with the mass extermination of the unborn in our country for the past 50 years, over 60 million babies murdered. As our country bathes in the blood of the innocent while bearing the weight of the accompanying guilt, we have been asking ourselves, whatever will we do? Not only was Roe completely unjust and asinine, it was also unconstitutional. The simple solution would have been to ignore it, which would have been the duty of every lesser magistrate. Now, even if baby sacrifice was codified into law, which is certainly the goal of the leftists in Congress, the lesser magistrate still has a duty before God and man to ignore it. But here we are, over 60 million babies later, as a result of complacency and cowardice. So you'll have to forgive me if I'm just a wee bit skeptical about the possibility of Roe being overturned. Or perhaps I'm just trying to be prepared for the shit show that is about to go down because I think Roe will actually be overturned. Sauron has been building his army for decades and he has been doing so while hiding in plain sight of all the evangelifish who have been too concerned about the gospel to care. And by gospel, they mean a magic talisman that protects them from ever having any conviction about anything that would be unpopular in polite society. And therein lies the problem. These evangelifish have actually been apostles of Sauron the whole time, like Sauron. But enough about Tim Keller. And why all of this Lord of the Rings talk anyway? Well, because I think if Roe is overturned, we can be thankful that we have survived Helm's Deep. But we need to be mindful that the battle for Minas Tirith and Middle Earth is only just begun. We also have to be mindful that the only way we can remove the bloodlust and desire for child sacrifice from our land is going to come through a full-throttled, 100-proof, take-all-prisoners gospel. That is a gospel that says all human beings are made in the image and likeness of God and that the Son of God, the second member of the Trinity, took on flesh. As the last Adam, our representative and our new covenant head to redeem humanity. Jesus Christ emptied himself by adding to his deity humanity. And as a man, he lived the righteous life that we could not live, obeying the strict precept of the law, loving and honoring his father, through obedience, while achieving our righteousness. Jesus was obedient even to the point of death, death on the cross. Though he was without sin, he took our sin upon himself and received the judgment that our sin deserved. He died in our place as our substitute. He entered into the heavenly holy of holies, offering up his blood, which speaks a better word, once and for all satisfying the Father's wrath and atoning for our sin. The Father approved of the finished work of his Son, raising him on the third day, and after making purification for sins, he ascended to the right hand of the majesty on high, where he currently reigns as the ruler of kings and nations, as the resurrected and glorified God-man. Now, until we understand that Christ made full atonement for our sins and that there is full forgiveness and restoration through repentance and faith in Jesus, and that the church has been sent out by Jesus to the nations, to obedience, to Jesus, and to teach them all that he, had command, all that he has commanded, we will continue to see a lust for human sacrifice in our land. And until the church of Jesus Christ understands that, yes, the gospel is the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. But that good news is something that runs all the way through, and it runs all the way down. And not only is the resurrection an historical fact, but so too is his ascension and reign. Until we get that in our bones, we will continue to kowtow and capitulate to the demons 
of our day. Herein lies the root of the problem. Abortion is a pagan religious sacrament to its core that demands blood to atone for sin. It is a sick, demonic perversion of Holy Communion that chants, this is my body, this is my blood, that won't just disappear with the removal of Roe. Nothing will actually be won with the removal of Roe. The battle will just be getting started, and we have to understand that we're going to war with demons. This is a spiritual war. These are people who have murdered over 60 million babies and celebrated as a human rights victory, as a victory for women everywhere. In fact, our cerebral challenged governor of the great state of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, tweeted on May 3rd, quote, Women are waking up this morning feeling hopeless, but we can't go back. I'm more motivated than ever to keep fighting like hell to ensure abortion remains safe and accessible in Michigan, end quote. Now, if you're not from Michigan, you're probably unaware that Gretchen is affectionately known as Whitler by some and Shitmer by others. But what should be apparent to all from that tweet is that Whitler climbed up all the way up the stupid tree and fell off the top, hitting every single last branch on the way down. Although I agree with the statement that she will fight like hell, which is a truer statement than even she realizes, I can't but point out that she will be fighting like hell to ensure abortion remains safe is a statement that is as stupid as hell. One can't help but ask the follow-up question, How does one safely rip apart a baby into pieces? Not only that, in all of her religious sanctimony, what else has our high imperial priestess justified? Well, I can't help but wonder if she will also fight like hell to ensure slavery remains safe and accessible. Will she also fight like hell to ensure that rape also remains safe and accessible? You would think that the inconsistency and the rank retardery would be apparent to all, especially those who claim to be Christ followers. And if not the rank retardery, certainly the obvious evil and wickedness of child sacrifice would be apparent. Certainly all these Micah 6-8 social justice warriors will be on the front end of all of this, right? outspokenly advocating the removal of Roe and publicly rebuking the statements of Whitler and all those like her. Where are these verbose virtue warriors, these um, eradicators of racism and these defenders of all human dignity and honor? Well, they are silent or they are piping the exact same tune as Whitler. They are just doing it while trying to be the responsible ones in the room. They'll say something like, we believe abortion is wrong but we don't think that Roe should be overturned now or not in this way, or it shouldn't be overturned at the expense of unity. These progressive parasites and evangelifish amongst us who still publicly call themselves Christians are like the Israelites who professed Yahweh while whoring after the nations, and they're not even good at their whoring. Quote, Men give gifts to prostitutes, but you give your gifts to all your lovers, bribing them to you from every side with your whorings. So you were different from other women in your whorings. No one solicited you to play the whore and you gave payment while no payment was given to you. Therefore, you were different. End quote. Ezekiel 16, through 34. Quote, And you took your sons and your daughters whom you had borne to me. And these you sacrificed to them to be devoured. Were your whoring so small a matter that you slaughtered my children and delivered them up as an offering by fire to them? And in all your abominations and your whorings, you did not remember the days of your youth when you were naked and bare, wallowing in your blood. And after all your wickedness, woe to you, declares the Lord. You built yourself a vaulted chamber and made yourself a lofty place in every square. At the head of every street, you built your lofty place and made your beauty an abomination, offering yourself to any passerby and multiplying your whoring. Ezekiel 16, 20 through 25. Now this brings us back to the beginning of the battle, a battle which is not just outside the church, but is very much inside the church. 
Many are surprised today that we have gotten to the point to where we can't even define what a woman is. But we shouldn't be surprised by this because we've been parsing the word person for decades. We few, we happy few. Now, let me circle back, like Jen Pisaki, to what I alluded to earlier. Does the church have the spine and the accompanying balls to stand against the onslaught that is most likely coming our way? Now, in order to answer that, let me describe a potential scenario for you. Roe is actually overturned. Now, before this goes back to the states, every Democratic congressman and senator is going to go batshit crazy trying to codify child sacrifice into law. Also keep in mind, they are going to be incredibly well-funded in doing so. Planned Parenthood is the largest nonprofit organization in the world and makes millions off selling baby parts on the black market. Also keep in mind that the tech monopoly, with all their virtue signaling proclivities and almost endless bank accounts, is almost entirely democratic. Also keep in mind how many scumbags in power on the left and the right need abortion to be legal so that they can remove the evidence of their sin and the sin of all of their perverted donors. But let's just assume everything goes well and all of this goes back to the states. At this point, what has been a cold war up to now will most likely become a hot war in some fashion. What do I mean? I mean our country is a powder keg ready to explode. And up until this point, we have lacked any type of geographical distinctions with the exceptions of a few states on both sides of the aisle. Now think of all of the religious fervor in which child sacrifice is held onto and celebrated by the left. I would also remind you of what these same people did in 2020, not just with COVID, but also with George Floyd. The left, left actively paid domestic terrorist groups like Antifa and BLM to burn down cities. That was because they saw an opportunity with Floyd, not because they actually care about racism. Now imagine what they'll do regarding something that they actually believe in with religious zeal. Now imagine that level of crazy sharing a border with a state that rightly and justly outlaws child sacrifice. In the middle of all of this, you'll have quote-unquote, conservative political hacks, whether it's the Twinkies and Trannies on Fox News or the homos on Blaze Media, letting everyone know that just because Roe was overturned, we don't have to go crazy because the states can still pass laws sanctioning child sacrifice and that they don't really have a problem killing babies either. They just want to make sure that it's done in a timely manner. On top of all of this, do you think the evangelical church that closed, closed its doors, stopped coming to the table, masked up, and pressured their congregants to take an experimental drug over the last two years is going to stand up against that onslaught? Does all of this mean that I'm pessimistic? Um, no, it means that I'm realistic, which means that we have a huge fight before us and life as we know it is about to change forever. Make no mistake about it, our country is a powder keg and Roe is the match. In being realistic, however, I am also incredibly optimistic because I know that King Jesus is on the throne and that every ruler and nation will fall before him. I think God has been busy sifting the wheat from the chaff in the church, and as a result, he has been strengthening the resolve of his people. And I would remind you that it is much better to fight with 300 valiant, violent men than to stand with 300,000 cowards. God is the God of the comeback victory. He is the God who knows his way out of the grave. If the last two years has taught you nothing, and you have yet to find your people, your band of brothers to lock shields with, I would strongly encourage you to do that before the next two years goes down. Something wicked this way comes, and the way in which we stand and fight will be the stuff that heroes are made of. Quote, this story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin, Crispin shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered 
We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition, and gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves accursed that they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap, whilst any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day. Conclusion As the clear line of demarcation grows between those who love Jesus and those who do not widens and deepens to the size of the Grand Canyon, we will see God's blessing increase upon his people. However, while this happens, we must also be prepared for the increase of the vitriol and the violence that that will be hurled our way as well. In all of this, our mission and proclamation does not change. Repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. We warn the nations, quote, Now therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. End quote. We stand against the world, For the sake of the world, because all who turn and find their refuge in Jesus will be called blessed. Before you go, if you like this video and want to see more, subscribe to our channel and like this video and leave a comment. Also, go follow us on social media to stay posted on all of our new content, updates, and lots more.